Hey guys, this is Gurren Sumo, Franchise Mode producer on NHL 20, and I'm here to talk to you about the new and exciting features we've added to Franchise Mode. So last year we built upon our cool new scouting system, and we wanted to build upon it for NHL 20 by introducing coaches to the game. By adding coaches, we were also able to add a line chemistry system, a brand new conversation system, and all new scouting reports. The cool thing is that all these tie back into the coaching staff. The coaching staff really changes the way that you approach the game and how you build your team. So like any feature we develop, we want to add as much depth as we possibly can. And we think we did this with our coaching feature. We have a wide range of coaches as well. So you're able to control the NHL head coach, the AHL head coach, all the way down to the AHL goalie coach. And we have roughly around 100 3D heads for these coaches as well. So you'll be able to see their likeness in the game uh, when you load up into gameplay. One other cool thing to note is that NHL players, when they retire, will also become coaches as well. Um, and you'll actually be able to see them behind the bench in the game. So with what we've added with coaching this year, we've changed the meta of how you build your team. So in years past, you would have just gone out and grabbed the best overall player, and that would help build success for your team. This year, Finding a player that fits your scheme as well as your strategy will help you build a better team. So with the coach card open, you'll notice that there's six tabs. You have attributes, morale, statistics, scheme fit, team strategies, and line strategies. But first we'll jump into attributes and explain how attributes work for coaches. So with coach attributes, we have six key attributes, offense, defense, power play, and penalty kill as well as teaching and coach influence. So here you can see that I have a coach with an A offense, A defense, A minus power play, and A plus penalty kill. With these four situations, with the coach having this high of an ability in these four attributes, during those situations in game and in the sim engine, it'll have an effect. If there was the inverse where this coach had an E across the boards uh, for those ratings, it'll have a negative impact in those situations. So next up, we have teaching and teaching specialty. And why this is important is, is it can help affect a rebuild to either go quicker or slower, depending on the coach's teaching rating. So on the left-hand side, you have a teaching specialty of generalist and a teaching rating of a B minus. And what this means is this coach is somewhat good at growing players' potentials as a generalist, which means they can do forwards, defense, goalies, at growing players' potentials. But if that coach had, say, a A plus and defense, that means that coach would be good at growing defenders really well. And by growing defenders, I mean it'll help increase the potential of the player. But if a coach has a really poor rating, they'll actually negatively impact the player's potential. Coach influence is similar to teaching, but is for the coaches. So coach influence helps distribute the XP to other coaches on your coaching staff. So the higher the coach influence, the better the staff will grow. Coaches will also accumulate stats and also can win the Jack Adams Award. One thing you'll notice on the screen is we actually show the team for the coaches as well as the career totals at the bottom. Um, this is also transferred over to the players as well. So you'll be able to see the individual stat line for that team in particular that that player played for in that year. Next up is morale, and morale has a far-reaching effect on different parts of the game. The coach's morale will actually have an effect on the staff chemistry, which in turn has an effect on the overalls of all the coaches, which has an effect on the gameplay as well as the sim engine through attribute effects. You'll notice that morale is now shown in bar form as opposed to the smiley faces. So coaches have four individual morale meters in team performance, coaching staff, management and player relationships. The team performance is affected by the uh, team performance. So this, if you go on big win streaks, losing streaks, it'll have an effect on this morale meter. Coaching staff is how well they get along with the other coaches on the team. Player relationship is how well they get along with the players on the team. And the management morale meter is affected by the user the most through our new conversation system. Players in addition also have a satisfaction meter with how satisfied they are with the coaches. So if that bar gets low enough, your star players will actually come and talk to you about potentially firing the coach. And this then gives you the decision whether or not to keep the coach or potentially get rid of some of the players to fit within the coach's system. 
One thing to also note is that CPUs will also hire and fire coaches throughout the year as well. Each team has a set of expectations that they have for the coaches. So if a team has an expectation for a coach to win the Stanley Cup and that coach happens to go on a 10 game losing streak, uh, that coach will be put on the hot seat. At that time, it's up to the coach to either start performing and having the team perform or they'll be fired. Uh, once they're fired, you'll be notified through a brand new pop-up that we added to tell you that a coach has been fired. And what's really cool about this is I've seen teams that make coaching changes that had really, really bad starts to the year or are really struggling, and then all of a sudden start winning more and more games. And this is because coaches' ratings actually affect the sim engine. And having the right coach and having a good coach actually has a very, very high impact on the success and failure of the team. So with coaches having morale, we've now added a new conversation system as a result. And this means that these coaches and their conversations has an impact uh, not only on the morale of the coach, but also on the team and how you build your team. As you'll notice when you first come into here, the screen looks completely different than it did before. In this case, the coach is actually wanting to add a veteran presence to the locker room and it's up to me to figure out what I want to do. I can outright disagree with the coach, I can agree with the coach, or I can try to persuade them out of their concerns. If I go down the agree path, in this case, I'll now be able to take the suggestion that the coach made, which in this case is acquiring a veteran over the age of 30, I can now either persuade them, which if you look onto the right-hand side is a little risky, so it may or may not work. But if it does work, I can get out of the actual situation and I don't have to modify my team if I don't want to. But in the case that the persuade fails, I'll then have a choice of either straight up disagreeing with the coach or making a promise. Promises are something new this year. Uh, promises will allow you to promise with the coach that you'll go out and do what they've suggested. If you fail to reach that promise, you'll lose management morale as a result. You'll lose double what you kind of see here, which is a plus 10 management morale um, uh, ratings impact. Or if you come through with it, you'll gain extra morale so you can keep your coaches happy, which then in turn raises their overall and their, their individual ratings, which has an impact on in game. So in this case, I'll try to persuade him out of his concern. It failed with it being risky. I'm not shocked it did. And in this case, I can now either disagree or make a promise. I'll disagree. And the coach obviously is not going to be happy with this uh, because I'm not following through with the suggestion. We wanted to give players as much agency as they possibly can so that they can sort of pick and choose what they want to do. If they want to agree with the coach and keep them happy, they can. If they don't really want to be messing with the roster that they've constructed, they can disagree with the coach and be okay with that. In addition to that, we also wanted to make the hiring and firing process feel a little bit more organic. And this new conversation system actually allowed us to do coach interviews. So knowing that the coaching system has such an impact on how you build your team, it was important for us to have the ability to interview coaches so that you can find a coach that fits your team's needs. So if you need a coach that's offensive, defensive, physical, balanced, or just a teacher, uh, we wanted you to be able to find that right coach. And to do that, we wanted them to be able to be interviewed, uh, which is really awesome. So you'll now be able to interview coaches prior to hiring them to get extra details on the type of team that they're looking to coach. Certain coaches will want to coach for a hardcore fan base or a, a team, team that is a, a championship team. Others may want to work with rebuilders. So now it's up to you to kind of pinpoint which coach fits your team and making them an offer. And we wanted to really, really make sure that we give you that full control other than just offering them a contract and them rejecting. So now it's up to you to figure out which coach, if, if any of that are in the free agent market, fit your team. The other cool thing with adding interviews is we're able to use this for draft day interviews. So you now can interview prospects to unlock extra bit of information prior to the draft. So with this new conversation revamp, we were actually able to use this for both players and coaches, which will now make player conversations even more flavorful than they were before. Every coach also has a line strategy, a team strategy, and a scheme fit. Line strategies are what they would like players to do on an individual line basis. Team strategies are what they want the team to holistically do. And then scheme fit is a representation of that 
for each line. So you'll see that 61% of my team fits this coach's scheme. And you'll notice on the right hand side that certain players fit it well and certain players don't. Players have a preferred way of that they want to play. And when a coach and player have the same strategy set, that will have a huge impact on chemistry, which we're going to take a look at next. With coaches and players both having preferred line strategies, the first thing you'll notice when you enter the edit line screen is that we have the line chemistry impact on the right hand side. You'll notice here that Bo Horvat fits this coach's scheme pretty well for the second line with three green check marks and uh, two yellow. And what this means is Horvat's going to contribute pretty decent chemistry to this line. Whereas a player like Michael Furlan, because he has a red X on his cycle shoot bias, means he's going to have a less of an impact on that line. So just to show you how it looks from a player's perspective, if I go to Josh Levo here, you'll notice that he has very good fit up and down the lineup, which is really important because this player now becomes versatile when you have injuries or you make trades and you can now move players, move this player up and down and it won't have a huge detriment to your chemistry, but it may improve your chemistry up and down the lineup. The line chemistry ranges from a plus five overall to a minus five overall. Plus fives are rare, but when you do get them, they do have a significant impact on the performance of the team. In addition to the scheme fit, uh, we also have factors of the player type. So two way four grinder, sniper, as well as uh, the position. So playing players out of position uh, can sometimes have a negative effect on your chemistry. Coaches also have a ice time allocation, which is how well, how much they like to roll their lines. So in this case, this coach likes to roll four lines. Some coaches have a very top heavy approach. Others have a three lines approach. They have ice time allocation for both forwards and defensemen. They also have a preferred style of making a lineup. So in this case, this coach likes to build their team in a very balanced stretch. But we also have offensive, defensive, uh, physical. So coaches that like to have players playing a more physical role in the bottom six, uh, they'll try to put those players into the lineup as opposed to more offensive players. So you'll get a lot more difference and variance in lines you'll play against and your lines particularly based off of the type of coach that you've hired. In years past, you would just always take the best overall player off of a team. Now you want to actually acquire players that are fitting your team's scheme. And it is very important to use your pro scouts to get this information. So because how important scheme fit is to building a team, we wanted to give you guys tools to help acquire players that fit your team scheme. So we've added two new scouting reports for both amateurs and pro scouts. For pro reports, we have added a team scouting report, which actually allows you to view things like the team strategies that the other coaches employ, the current coaching staff, as well as the other strategies on a per line basis. So here we can see that this coach potentially plays an overload system for his forward line one and a crash the net scheme for forward line three. In addition to that, we also added a new pro report for players. This pro report is an improvement on our previous uh, pro scout assessment. So the pro scout assessment now allows you to get a better gauge on where this player may actually fit in your lineup. So the pro scout assessment is now very important as a result. So in this case, if I go to Hampus Lindome, I know that he fits in all my power play lines, but he may not fit in my, you know, my defensive pairing lines. Whereas Getz Lafayette fits in both my forward line one, as well as all power play lines. So as you cycle through, some players will have a fit, some players may not. And this really changes up the meta game of team building. So in addition, we also added two new amateur scouting reports. Um, so if I go into the view draft class screen here, you'll notice that uh, we have the scheme fit report as well as the NHL ETA report. Each has two different reasons why you would want to use these reports. The NHL ETA actually allows you to have a gauge of how ready this player is right now. So in this case, this player is NHL ready. But in other cases, a player may be two, three, four, five years out, and that may change how you go about picking a player. So you may want to pick the NHL ready player because you need that help right away. Or you can pick a guy that's maybe two years away that you can let develop 
and, and sign at a later time and then have them step in and take over that role for an existing player on your team. In addition, we have the Scheme Fit Report, and the Scheme Fit Report ties back into that meta of team building. It's not just always taking the best available player. Uh, you may now want to take the best available player that also has a Scheme Fit that matches your coach's scheme. So in this case, this player likes to cycle and pinch. Uh, if my coach wanted to do that, that's maybe a player that I would want to take. Now, it may not make a huge difference in the top 10, but as you get into the later rounds of the draft, that becomes more and more important as you want to pick a player that you can get the most out of in your system. Uh, up next, we have Trade Finder uh, or Find Trade. And the big reason why we did this feature was trying to get rid of some of the pain points of the trading system to make it a little bit more efficient and less cumbersome for you as the user to find players that you want to acquire or trade players off of your team and get offers for them. So now you'll get multiple offers from teams based off of assets you select. You can also go to other teams filters and select players off of their team and get offers for what the CPU team is wanting from you. In this case, I'll go in and I'll trade Louis Erickson. And because we've now added the ability to trade bad contracts, You'll have to add a sweetener, of course. So in this case, I'll have to trade Lou Erickson and say my first round pick and see if any team would bite on that. If I hit uh, open all trade block, looks like the auto centers actually bid on that. <laughs> They're able to take Louis Erickson's contract on being as a rebuilder and having a lot of cap space. But in exchange for taking on that contract, they want my first round pick. They'll give me back a third and a player. But... This is a trade that wouldn't have happened in the past. Uh, you wouldn't have been able to get a trade like this and be able to find a trade this quickly on it. I was able within a matter of a couple of button presses get to a trade that I may have taken me a lot longer to get to, having to find the right team, having to find the right combination of assets. So this really helps alleviate uh, a big pain point in the trading system. And this also helps you navigate the salary cap world a little bit. So you're able to offload bad contracts or absorb bad contracts if you're a rebuilding team and you want to take on some salary and get to the min cap. It just really makes for a better feeling that you're picking up the phone and calling Ottawa, asking them what they would want for Louis Erickson in a first, as opposed to I'll try a second, now I'll try a third. You're able to get to the end goal of finding a trade for what you're trying to get, get rid of or trying to acquire. So you'll have three options here, edit trade, accept trade, or decline trade. If you decline the trade, it'll get rid of the trade. If you accept the trade, it'll go through right away. You can also go in and edit the trade. So you can go into the proposed trade screen. Now that you have a starting point, you can now modify the trade a bit if you like, kind of allowing you to play around with the still, still taking advantage of the old system and mixing it in with the new system. One other thing you'll notice on the screen is exempt contracts. So exempt contracts are actually contracts that are players from the WHL, OHL, and uh, QMJHL. And those contracts no longer count towards the 50-man contract limit. And because they no longer count towards the 50-man contract limit, it's actually opened up trading in general because not all teams are at that limit. So this has really helped add more trades during deadline time. You'll see a lot more movement as a result. Lastly, we've added additional depth and breadth to the mode as well, not just to the new features, but to existing features that have really added to the core fundamentals of the mode. We've added a brand new points per game trade value mod, which gives you a boost or a penalty based off of how well you're performing. Or for goalies, it'll be for save percentage. And this also has an effect on contracts. So You'll notice if, uh, say, Mitch Marner has a 100-plus point season, he'll now be asking for $10 million plus dollars and if he has a really bad season, he may be asking for like eight. So it can go even significantly lower if he has a really, really bad season where he has maybe like zero points in 82 games. Somehow that happened. But it'll have a huge influence on contracts now. So performance has a big, big impact on the dollar value and the trade value of the players. And this is really good because it fixes the issue where a minor league player who's played zero NHL games and is 85 overall and is asking for $3 million or $4 million. Now, because of this, they'll be asking for a reasonable contract, which may be in the in 900000 to a $1 million range because that player hasn't proved anything in the NHL. 
And I mentioned to you before, teams are now willing to take bad contracts. But this also means that teams are now putting bad contracts on the trade block. So in the case of, um, let's take Toronto, and this year in, in real life, they put Patrick Marlowe on the trade block. We've now put in logic that would do something similar. If they have a RFA that they want to sign, they'll try to put a contract that is bad or a contract that eats up too much cap space that won't allow them to sign their RFA that they would like to. They will now put that player on the trade block. Uh, we've also fixed a few goalie trading and free agency issues as well. So you'll now notice that goalies are now filled out a lot better throughout uh, future years of uh, franchise mode. Goalies and wingers have less trade value than centers and defensemen. Goalies have even less trade value than wingers. So you'll now not see goalies being worth the equivalent of a, you know, a defender or a, or a center, which kind of skews trades, which helps improve the trading a little bit more, makes it feel a little bit more organic. So franchise goalies still have really, really high trade value, depending on how high of a franchise player they are. So if they're in the mid to low 90s, they'll still be worth the equivalent of a center. But as you get lower into the starting ranks, they're not worth as much as a you know second line center, which they were in years past. Players with one year left on their deals will have less value as the season goes on now. So at the deadline, players with one year left will be worth slightly less than full value. And then at the draft, they'll be worth significantly less. And because of that, because we've added that logic, the CP won't reject those trades anymore. So you won't get a pop-up saying, oh, we're not willing to absorb this contract with one year left. The, the CP will now trade you a third round pick or a fourth round pick or vice versa. You can trade, you can give up a fourth to third for negotiation rights for that type of player. We've added a trade alert pop-up. So now when big trades happen, a trade alert shown. Uh, we've added a new sim engine scoring setting uh, of high, medium, and low. So now you can control how much scoring occurs throughout the sim. But one of the cool things of adding coaching, it's actually helped improve the sim engine scoring. So you'll see a lot more 100 point scores in the sim just on the normal default setting. But if you want to amp that up a bit more, you can add that to high and you'll see even more 100 point scoring as a result. We've also tuned down the scout efficiency, which we know was kind of a big issue last year where you can simply just grab all the gems and all the elite players and elite goalies uh, that are in the draft. So now it takes scouts a lot longer for them to get a full scouting report on a player, which in turn means by the end of the year, you won't have as much scouting reports on players. So you won't be able to potentially find all these players. However, if you manually scout and are able to identify players early on, you can really get detailed reports and still get those gems as a result. Speaking of goalies and scouting reports, we've tuned down the number of franchise goalies and elite goalies as a result. So you won't see as many of those goalies in the draft classes, so you can't flip them for high value assets as a result. Uh, we've added also a handful of other things, such as add a contract year to the expansion draft flow, so you can now not lose a contract year if you play custom rosters. We also added an auto owner mode, so that you're able to just let owner mode do its thing without uh, having to repair or upgrade things. And lastly, we've added icons integration. So now you can bring in iconic teams into franchise mode and have Gretzky play alongside McDavid or have the all-time Edmonton Oilers team play in the NHL of today. Uh, we also added the original draft placements of the teams in the draft lottery pop-up. So now you can see where teams are moving up and down the draft lottery. And we also tune the distribution of uh, medium grade prospects. So prospects that are elite medium or top six medium, they are a little bit more hit or miss than they were in the previous year. So those are all the big features we've added to NHL 20. We've added new coaches, we've added line chemistry, we've added new scouting reports as well as trade finder and added a, a lot of depth to the game just in general and we're really excited for this year we're hoping that you guys enjoyed as much as we enjoyed working on it and it's going to be a fun year for franchise mode in nhl 20.